Well, this is odd. This is the Ames Monument. It is a 60 foot high and 60 feet across at the base granite pyramid out on the high plains of southern Wyoming. We're at 8,700 feet or something like that. This was built to commemorate the Ames brothers for their contributions to the construction of the first transcontinental railroad and it was built near the highest point of the railroad. As I understand it, basically they were the guys who financed and lobbied for the railroad. It is a weird thing to behold. I mean, it is huge. You can see it as soon as you get off the interstate. You probably see it from the interstate. And there's a relief sculpture of each brother on the side of the monument here. I think the reason this is so strange to me that is that it feels it feels inappropriate to build something this big and grand. Oh, there's a pronghorn out there. Anyway, to build something like this for people who did anything short of, I don't know, cure cancer or save the world somehow, it, it seems a bit off. It's like, okay, these guys helped build the railroad, but, uh, you know, they were not super good people. They, uh, you know, bribed politicians and, and all sorts of crooked things, had all sorts of crooked dealings, and I'll put a link to this Monuments Wikipedia page in the video description if you want to read more about it, but definitely interesting. Definitely out of place here. Definitely worth stopping to see. Again, it's just a few minutes off of I-80, off of the interstate. And then here is the other brother on the other side. We are now at a place called Vidavu. Vidavu Recreation Area. I've known about Vidavu for years. It's a popular rock climbing area. Where is the trail? I'm just doing a hike that goes around this main rock formation here. It's called the Turtle Rock Trail. I believe this main rock is called Turtle Rock. It's about three miles long. Should take me an hour and a half or so. Hour, hour and a half. This place is reminiscent of Joshua Tree in Southern California in that it's essentially just piles of large rocks. But it's a little bit more colorful here. The rock in Joshua Tree is just kind of a uniform gold, more or less. Here you've got browns and greens and tans and a little bit more variation. Really beautiful place. And we are back. Well, that was a nice little hike. Nothing earth shattering, but it went through more forest than I thought it would. So that was really nice. Very pleasant hiking through the forest and uh, yeah, just a really enjoyable, enjoyable little diversion here, just off the interstate. It was 3.2 miles long, took an hour and 12 minutes. I'm gonna head now into town, gonna run some errands and then we'll, uh, we'll show you a few things. We are in downtown Cheyenne, Wyoming now. This is the state capital of Wyoming. 
Nice little downtown area. Attractive old, old town. There are several of these eight foot high cowboy boots painted by local artists sprinkled in throughout town. There are a few of them in this area. Here's the old train depot in town with a couple other of the painted boots out in front. And here is the Wyoming State Capitol building, completed in 1890. It's a while later now, I have driven across Wyoming, basically. And this is a kind of a foreign landscape to me, I'm not used to such featureless places. I mean, in almost all of my videos, there are mountains or canyons or topography of some sort. And I guess there are like some, you know, the landscape is slightly rolling here, but otherwise it is, I mean, it's compared to what I'm used to, this is, this is flat and empty. But anyway, I came here because, um, well, you've heard of the Four Corners where Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona meet. You can stand in four different states at once. This is three corners. This is where Colorado, Wyoming, and Nebraska meet. This is the monument right here. I'm currently in Colorado. Nebraska is on this side. Basically the, the Nebraska-Wyoming border is right here. So this side is Nebraska, this side is Wyoming. And there we go, three corners. I did it. Not much else to say. On to the next spot, I guess. This is the direction we're headed, but we are going on to some private land. High Point Bison Ranch. Gonna pay our three dollars here. We are going to the highest point in Nebraska, which is somewhere out here. I think our destination is right here, just ahead. We did it. We have made it to Panorama Point Elevation, a lofty 5,424 feet the highest point in Nebraska. And sure enough, there is a herd of bison just right there. Here's a zoomed in look at the bison that are off in the distance. This is the herd that roams around the area. On top of the world! So apart from the summit monument here, there is a summit register that you can sign, which I already did. I signed this little notebook here. I thought this was funny. It's a riff on the, uh, the California flag, California Republic, Nebraska Republic, with a cow. And we have a bench. And that's it. There's nothing else here. This is the top of Nebraska. Well, I did it. Mission accomplished. Climbed the high peak here on the, the prairie, the plains of, of southwestern Nebraska. Worth a visit, worth a stop. I have a goal to climb all 50 US state high points and uh, 
you know, this is on the list, so I had to come here and I'm glad I did. It's fun to compare this with something like Gannett Peak, which is the highest point in Wyoming, which I climbed a few weeks ago, which involved 40 miles of backpacking and 7,000 feet of elevation gain and crossing glaciers and rivers, and it was a, an epic three-day adventure. And then there's this that you can just drive up and it's, uh, you know, it's only a couple hundred feet higher than the, the city of Denver. And so it, it's just fun to, to have a goal like this that'll prompt you to go places that you otherwise wouldn't go. And like, I, I never would have come here otherwise, but it's fun to come out here to the plains, to the high plains and uh, see the herd of, of bison grazing off in the distance. And yeah, I'm glad I came here. The problem is that it's now not even three o'clock and I'm done with everything that was on my list for the day. And so I'm going to consult my notes here, do some research on my phone and figure out what my next, my next step is. And then I'll fill you guys in once I've figured that out and once I'm at my next destination. Okay, it's about 40 minutes later. We are back in Colorado. We're at this trailhead here. I'm the only one here. We are gonna hike toward these buttes out here. These are called Pawnee Buttes. I am on Pawnee National Grassland. So National Grasslands are pretty new to me. I, I've, I don't think I've ever really spent time on one, I've never camped on one, I've never done anything on one. But in doing some research for this trip, I saw that uh, you know, obviously this is a national grassland, and when you look on a map, depending on which map you look at, the national grassland will either be like a perfect square, like a green square, and that is the national grassland. Or if you get more specific, and if you look at actual public land boundaries, that square that you're looking at, that big square, is actually made up of a bunch of smaller squares that are public land. And there can be, at times, quite a bit of private land in between those chunks of, of public land. And the reason for that is that, I don't know if this is the case for all national grasslands, but for the ones that I've looked into, the national grasslands came to be during or, or soon after the Dust Bowl. So that would have been, what, the 1920s or 30s, I guess? And so the government bought chunks of private land and then made them public and turned those chunks into national grassland, but not everyone wanted to sell, and so that's why there are still chunks of private land between the chunks of public land, of public national grassland. So I thought that was interesting. Well, I have found a campsite for the night. It's actually just a few minutes up the road from the trailhead for that hike, which was a great hike, by the way. I really enjoyed that, definitely worth doing. I think I did about a four mile loop. But yeah, I, I passed this campsite on the way to the trailhead. So I took note of it and I figured that uh, if it was still available by the time I was ready to leave, then I would camp here and sure enough, it was available. So here I am. It's an interesting experience for me. I've never camped on national grassland before. I've never really camped on the prairie like this. And so this is, uh, this is exciting for me. It really is a beautiful area, especially with the smoky haze in the sky. It gives it kind of a, almost an otherworldly hue to the lighting. It just makes it 
feel a little bit, uh, well, it just makes it feel different. The haze is kind of a natural filter on the sun, and it's, uh, I like the effect that it has. Anyway, I think I'm done for the day. I'm going to organize a bunch of things. I've been sloppy with my car organization since the start of this trip, so I'm gonna remedy that tonight. And hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed something a little bit different from me and uh, different to what is normally on this channel. And I think that will continue over the next several videos as I explore Nebraska and South Dakota and North Dakota, none of which are places that I've explored before. And so I will be exploring this together. Again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.